What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Ratchet and Clank HD. So now we are on our way to Planet Hoven to stop Drek from unleashing his giant missile nuke thing that he uses to destroy an entire planet for some reason. So instead of making a uh, Death Star or a Star Killer base, he's just made a giant missile, which apparently he thinks is going to do the job. So it's attached to an underwhelmingly small uh Star Cruiser there, which appears to be held together with rebar and other kinds of things. This is a terrible plan for somebody with as much budget as he does. The game just gave us a help desk prompt there about the uh, thruster pack uh, gl uh, hover ability like I was talking about earlier. So, I forgot there was an enemy encounter here, so I'm caught a little bit off guard. Let me demonstrate it here in combat. These are just regular Blarg Troopers like we fought back on uh, Eudora and previous levels. And uh, we're going to deal with them the usual way. They still take two hits. So there's multiple, there's like three branching paths in this level, one of which is not readily available from the start here. We have to kind of, we find it along the way on the second path. But I'm going to be going here first because it's going to bring us to the last little backtracking place with Act 2. There's a puzzle here much like a Quark's hideout where you have to activate all three buttons at the same time. And uh, this, will, this will be a recurring thing in this portion of the level. So guess what guys? We have a snow level because every action platforming game has to have a snow level. That means it's not complete without terrible ice physics. Yes, unfortunately. So, we will be slipping and sliding all over the place and to circumvent this issue, the glide ability with, or the hover ability rather, with the thruster pack does help with this a little bit. Unfortunately, we do not have this ability in upcoming games in the series, although they're not as platform heavy, so really it'll be okay. That's a lot of bolts. Yeah, this is a brief sequence here of platforming. We're going to have to do all these button challenges, and then we'll get an item that allow us to backtrack to a previous level and unlock something that I think is pretty critical for uh, the sake of the game, uh, especially doing a New Game Plus run. You need to go out of your way to get this item. Really? You're going to fall over there? If only we had an item that would draw bolts and other items towards us that fall out of reach like that. Soon enough. So we gotta obviously wait for the right opportunity here to use the swing shot or else we'll get hit by those beams. Very rarely does it ever happen to me though. Okay, here we go. Ice physics and platforming at the same time. Here we go. So obviously, as you can clearly tell, we're going to be maintaining a lot of momentum as we uh, slide across here, but using the um, double jump and the hover from the thruster pack, or, or even the heli pack, does actually uh, help give us a little bit more mobility. And you can uh, stop and uh, go into first person. You'll, you'll slide a little bit, but you'll eventually just come to a complete stop. There is actually, this is... Um, related to a speedrunning trick that was that's going to be used in the next two Ratchet and Clank games that have the charge boots. Um, Ratchet 1 speedrunning is a lot different than um, in the next two games because we don't have charge boots, which you guys will see what those are when we get to it, but yeah, AGDQ was just uh, a couple weeks ago and I got to see the Up Your Arsenal speedrun, and it might have been one of the highlights of the entire event for me because it was so in impressive. I had never seen a uh, speedrun of that before. I'll talk more about it when we get to up your arsenal. Is there a problem, sir? Y'all wouldn't have any spare parts, would you? Help yourself. These dang rocks are too tough. I keep breaking my drill. That rock is raritanium. Let me look at that drill. Well, shoot my dog and call me Sally. Thanks, partner. No problem. I suppose I could take that rock off your hands, too. Heck, here you go. Huh, so he just gave us some raritanium. You would think he would know what that is, but whatever. I'm not going to look any deeper into it. So we can glide out here and be back at the start of the level again. So we're going to keep going. I'm not going to backtrack to uh, Pukitaru quite yet. We have to take the raritanium to Pukitaru. There's an, the one. There's a couple of other optional areas there that I did not explore. Um, there's a new uh, weapon available here called the drone device, if I didn't say so before, which um, is a. Eh, it's not that great. It creates a 
a series of little robot drones that float around you and they will attack nearby enemies that are like basically within melee range of you and uh, they will i think they'll also intercept damage for you which it seems kind of nice but they wear out so fast and you have to re-establish them it's there's a, a better version of this in the next game called the Tesla, I'm sorry, the uh, Shield Barrier, which uh, upgrades into the Tesla Barrier, but we won't go there quite yet. A much better idea than what they did with this game. So I'm just going to be ignoring that altogether. I'd rather just dodge the attack and use a more efficient weapon than those. But it's nice for what it is. I mean, if, you, if you're in New Game Plus and you have all the bolts to spare, I would definitely recommend using it, but I'm not going to be taking advantage of it. If you didn't purchase the premium nanotech like I did, and you're going for the final boss, you may want to get it, but other than that, I I don't really see the need for it at all. So, we have pretty much every weapon unlocked, except for uh, the second to last weapon, I believe. Uh, that'll be in, in a couple planets coming up here. So, so these guys are called angle biters. And they are actually a two-hit enemy despite their size, uh, kind of similar to like the pufferfish back on Pogatara there. So as a result, that can be pretty dangerous. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna be using the suck cannon on them where I can, uh, but I'm gonna whip out the Porositer again here, which is something we haven't used in a while, uh, so I can take them out here. They, they will respawn for quite a while in this area, which is really inconvenient. I think there is a uh, skill point or something we get for killing all of them, but I'm gonna grind off of them to get some bolts for a minute here. And there's another optional area up here where we can get a gold bolt. And that's pretty much the entire purpose of this area. Other than that, there's really no purpose to it. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be using the Proster. Because I won't, probably will not use it again for the rest of the game if I don't use it here and now. I even took it off of my uh, Quick Select there. Because I really just don't need it anymore. Not really much point in using it against just one of them though, because our wrench would do the job just fine. It's really for big groups of enemies, so... Alright, I've gotta, uh, gotta jump on this... I've gotta do a wall jump here on this moving platform as it's going up, so it's some tricky timing here. It might take me a couple tries to get this right. But that's pretty much all there is to the puzzle. Once we get to the top, we have the gold bolt. And really, once you get the first jump down you have the pattern down right so it should be easy okay I guess that's all of them I don't see any skill point though huh maybe there's more to it than I remember but I'm not going for all the skill points in this run anyway because let's face it they're ri ridiculously hard and ultimately not worth it Oh, so close. Alright, let's try that again. I may have to hit the wall first and the platform second. But with the right timing, of course. There we go. It's easier than I made it look. I was just failing miserably at getting the timing right. I'm still recovering Devastator ammo from the use on orcs in there because I just don't want to buy it. It's too expensive. So these crates over here actually have large soldiers in them, so we're going to shoot the suck cannon at them and just destroy them. That'll prevent those guys from even spawning in. There's three of them that are managed to survive, though, so I'm going to try to group them together. Oh, that's what it was. So the guys that I sucked up, they count towards that skill point, and it didn't register until they were all officially dead, so until I fired them out of the suck cannon, it wasn't going to register that I had killed them all. That's interesting. Oh well, it's all over and done with now. Yeah, as you can see, there's nothing in that box. They were... That seems like such a such a stupid trap, but I guess it's in theme with <laughs> it's in theme with this game's silliness, and it's in theme with the uh, incompetence of these these Blar guys. Man, triple kill with one shot there. The bomb glove is still good even late in the game here. The very first weapon we had, we paid nothing for it. We had it at the beginning of the game, and it's still good. I mean, if you could hold forty grenades in any game. Wouldn't you want to? 
I can name quite a few games that I wish I could hold 40 grenades. Anyway, so it looks like there is a some kind of water processing plant thing machine here. And this is going to be the central focus of the puzzle for this room here. This is a largely a non-combat section. It's mostly puzzle-based. And it uh, obviously involves a hydro, hydro displacer. So there are several canisters filled with water here. And on the bottom level here, we're going to be draining this tank and filling it up somewhere else, which is going to increase the water line and allow us to swim upward to higher elevation. And that's going to allow us to continue the puzzle. So right now the room is completely drained. We're going to try to flood this entire room. There's also a gold bolt in this room, and I will try to not forget to get it. If I decide to get it on my way back, that's different, but... Um, having the O2 mask here is definitely nice as well, because we don't have to worry about drowning anymore, of course. I don't think you can... You can't get here without the O2 mask anymore, because obviously we had to have the O2 mask to even find the info bot on Orkson. So, now I can get over here to this elevation with a little bit of platforming and drain this tank in here. Now I just gotta find the point in which I can dispense this one. If you look at the Hydro Displacer, you can see a uh, little bit of water dripping out the front of it at all times. It's never gonna run out or anything, it's just a nice little visual effect. So the whole time this platform right here is at the bottom there in a little pool, and it's slowly moving upward as you increase the water line, it's gonna allow us to get up here. It seems confusing, definitely at first, if you don't know the layout of this room, but after a while it becomes easier to remember. No, that platform down there is underwater now. We have enough water elevation to be able to reach this platform up here. Which is finally going to take us to the top. And now that we've fully flooded the room, we can actually get back in uh, where we were on the second elevation where that tank was that we drained and swim up to the top of the water line and that's going to allow us to access that gold bolt. This is one that I had a very hard time finding my first time through the game. I think mainly because my brother had already played it and he had already found these locations and I was basically asking him, you know, where is it on, on uh, Hoven because I can't find it and he was just being a, you know, as older brothers are when you're children, and uh, didn't want to tell me that it was in this. He, he did, when I was in this room looking for it, he said it's not in here, even though I ended up finding it here anyway. So, well, that doesn't look dangerous at all. Yeah, there's quite a few exploding crates here, which we can probably destroy easily with the taunter if we wish to. There's going to be some more ankle biters popping up here, and I just want to suck them up with the suck cannon and get ready for some more large soldiers in the area too. All these rooms over here are optional, we just get some nice bolts and that kind of thing over here. Good place to uh, stock up on ammo and grind a little bit here. There's also some spots where we can get some bolts with the metal detector, so I'm definitely going to be showing that off. I know I've showed the metal detector on screen at least a couple of times, but this is going to be a nice area. Uh, where we can use it. I don't think we use it at all on Orkson, so finally we get to demonstrate it some more. Obviously I'm not going to be going to every location in the game that has bolts you can get with the metal detector because there's probably one on every planet. Even planets you've already been to before you got the metal detector, you can backtrack there and get the bolts now, but it's not really worth it unless you're saving up for the Rhino, which you should be, but there's ways of grinding for the Rhino that I'll probably talk about eventually, but um, Obviously, I'm not going to be going for the Rhino during this run because it just wrecks everything, and uh, I want to beat the final boss without it. I kind of like how the music naturally changes too, like this is the music we hear throughout the entire level, but back there in the other area, we were hearing some unique and different music, which 
I like how the game does that in certain areas, especially like puzzle areas, it'll change up the music to kind of fit the mood of whatever is going on at that time. Alright, let's go ahead and get the metal detector out and get this taken care of. I don't want to look at this stupid icon anymore, and I want to go ahead and get out of this area. I almost want to do like an audio comparison so you guys can hear just how radically different this thing sounds in the original PS2 version. The sound effect for it in the HD collection is just weird. It's not bad or anything, but I feel like you can definitely tell the difference in how close and far you or close or far you are from the bolts in the original version, but being that I already know how to use this thing and there's also even if you can't hear it, there's that visual cue as well where the metal detector is always pointing in the direction of where it is, even if you don't have the circle button held down, it's still aiming in that direction. Oh my goodness. Aren't you just a little angel? <laughs> Actually, um, I'm a little robot. <laughs> You're funny too. Yeah, looks on everything. You be nice. I think I got something special for you. How would you like a hydro pack upgrade? That would be quite helpful for swimming underwater. Whatever. There you go, sweetie. <laughs> you look so handsome. Thank you, miss. Your craftsmanship is excellent. If you two are through, jealous. You come back and see me any old time.